Okay, so for 11.4, finding the combined surface area, we're actually gonna kind of cheat the system today. Instead of using the formulas from the reference sheet, I'm actually gonna teach you an easier way that it's like cheating, but it's not cheating because it's using our brains just in a deeper way. So we have to determine the surface area of the combined regular square based pyramids that are joined at their bases. So they touch their bases together. So they're actually touching at the bases. So surface area literally means if I were to wrap this like a present and put a little bow on top and wrap it, how much wrapping paper would I actually need? So if you were thinking conceptually and you're physically wrapping this, the wrapping paper does not ever actually touch the bases because they're touching at their bases. So instead of using the formula, what we're gonna do is we're gonna think that this So we are going to find the surface, or we're going to find the area of each side, and then we're going to just add them all together. So basically, because it's a square base period mid, that means that this length is 12, this length is 12, the back side is 12, this side is 12. So if I go all the way around, it's 12. So all these triangles are identical to each other, even though they may not look like it. This triangle is the same as this triangle and the back side and the back side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the area of a triangle. So for the area of a triangle, this is not on your formula sheet. You need to know this. It is one half base times height. So I'm gonna bring down my one half. I'm gonna bring down my base length. So the base length is 12 for all of these. The height of the triangle is 14. Oh, why did I write it like that? 14. And now I'm gonna use my calculator, 12 times 14 is 168. And then I can either think about this as multiplying by 0.5 or dividing by two because I'm cutting it in half. So it should be getting smaller. So I'm gonna do 84. So 84 represents the area for this colored triangle. Now, if I think I have a triangle here, I have a triangle right here, I have a triangle in the back, I also have another triangle in the back. So there's four triangles on the side of the pyramid. There's also four triangles at the base. So that makes a total of eight triangles. So I'm just gonna multiply by eight, and then that's gonna give me the total surface area for this conjoined square-based pyramid because there's eight triangles. We have one here, there's one right here, There's one in the back over here. And then there's one that's in the back this way. So there's four on the top, there's four in the bottom. So that's what you're gonna do for your front problems. Now let's go to the back. The back is a review of mid segments of trapezoids. So we're gonna do number one together and I'll help you set up number three. So for number one, for a trapezoid with a mid segment, um, there are two problems in each problem. So one of which is finding X. And if you look where X is, X is on the mid segment itself. So X plus two is representing the length. So I'm gonna use all the lengths together to solve for the length. Um, if you look at your Y's, your Y is technically a angle measure. So this part and this part go together. Angles go with angles and sides go with sides. So using my mid-segment theorem, what this formula is, is the bases added together divided by two equals to the mid-segment. You can also rearrange this to where the bases added together equals two times the mid-segment. So both of these formulas work. A lot of people prefer to do the multiplication versus the division, which is totally fine. So I'm gonna use this formula because I have it written second. So for base one, I'm gonna use nine. For base two, I'm gonna use the top, which is three. And I'm doing two times the middle, which is X plus two. To get rid of my parentheses, I'm gonna have to distribute. So I have nine plus three is 12 equals two times x is two x, two times two is 
four, and now I can solve for x. It's a two-step equation. I'm gonna minus four to both sides, minus four. So I get eight equals two x. Last step is division, so x equals four. So that's my side lengths. Now looking at y, it's kind of like a separate problem. So y's have these little degrees, so these go together. I have a 50-50 chance, either they equal to each other or they add to make 180. Because this is an obtuse angle, it's more than 90 degrees, it's big, it's massive, it's huge. And this one is actually just a wee bit angle because it opens just a little bit, it's acute. They do not equal to each other because an acute angle will never equal to an obtuse angle. So I'm actually gonna add them together and set it equal to 180. Because when we did this, we talked about same side interior angles are consecutive, meaning that they add to make 180. So these two angles are on the same side of the shape together. So I'm gonna add to make 180. So if I can combine like terms, negative two plus 122 is 120, which equals 180. And now I can minus 120 to both sides because it's a two-step equation. And then I can divide by three. So I get y equals 20. So using that same method, you can do the other problems. Um, number three is a little bit different, so we're going to talk about number three, how you would set this up. I'm not going to do it for you, but I'll show you how to set it up. So this wants to find X and Y, and it says we have a mid-segment, so this is the middle. And notice I have 30 and 10, because if I add these bases, that makes 40. 40 divided by 2 makes 20. There's also no variables here, so I'm actually not using these numbers literally at all in the problem. They're just trying to have me look at them. I don't need to look at them, though. So what we talked about with a trapezoid mid-segment is that these pieces are um, like technically my sides are the mid-segment. So this is a midpoint to this line and this one is a midpoint to this line. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to set this equal to this and we're going to set this side equal to this side. We don't know if they're equal this way but we do know that they're equal here because this is a midpoint. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna set this equal to this. And then over here you can do 4x minus six equals x plus nine. 